Snickers is a chocolate treat loved for its delicious nougaty filling laced with peanuts and topped with sweet, sweet caramel. But you know the drill by now. I'm bored with regular old Snickers. I want to cook something with them. Well, if you're anything like me, you'll want to stick around. Not only will I be trying a number of Snickers-based confections, I'll be showing off some original recipes too. Join me in the Snickers kitchen. Why am I holding this? Anyways, let's start with a delicious baked treat. First up are, one of the safest bets for any chocolate treat is to stick them in a cookie. From pressing a Hershey's Kiss down into your peanut butter puck to grating a Mr. Good Bar on your coconut macaroons, chocolate has solidified its spot on this snack quite splendidly. And I'm happy to inform, Snickers is no different. I'm using a specific recipe from Avery Cooks, but you can really use any brown sugar cookie base and drop in any chopped up chocolate bar of your choice with or without the usual chips. You probably know this part, but for a brown sugar cookie dough, you want to throw together some softened butter, brown sugar, granulated sugar, flour, vanilla extract, a bit of salt, and an egg. This recipe also adds a bit of cornstarch to thicken and stabilize without drying out the cookie. As this blog states, to keep them soft and light. Once this is all mixed, chop up a handful of Snickers into your form factor of choice and either add in some chocolate chips or roughly chop a plain or candy bar. Toss those in and mix a bit to combine and you've got yourself a beautiful bowl of cookie dough. Next, you'll want to fridge those suckers for a couple hours to prevent them from getting all sad in the oven. And towards the end, preheat your oven and line a baking sheet with oiled parchment or a silicon mat. Scoop out two inch balls of dough onto your baking sheet and plop them down two inches away from each other. Stick that in the oven, wait eight or nine minutes, and voila! Magically, your lumps have turned into much more appetizing lumps. Let these cool off for a few minutes and dig into your delicious chocolatey spoils. For a bonus, if you're a fiend for cookie dough, want to use this in an ice cream or just eat it straight, modifying this recipe is as simple as, well, cookies, I guess. Just measure out the flour into an ungreased pan ahead of time, bake at 350 for five or so minutes, and don't include the cornstarch and you're A-O cool. I used to be a big fan of eating straight cookie dough and this saved me the trouble of getting salmonella. So uh, real talk guys, Snickers work really well in a cookie. You get the melty caramel bits, you get the chocolate, the nougat gives it like a nutty flavor but it kind of doesn't really change the texture too much. You've got the textural variety from the chocolate and the caramel but you've also got like the flavor variety going on. Honestly, just like solid, good cookies, like nine out of 10. The only way they could be better, I think, is if the uh, caramel was a bit more cohesive, but for that you're going to want to make your own like thickened caramel sauce specifically for cookies or use like caramel chips. Good stuff though, for real. Uh, I will be making these again because they are drop dead easy and absolutely delicious. Uh, yeah, like I said, 9 out of 10. Thumbs up for me, two thumbs up. Alright, um, so uh, what's next then? We've, we've done cookies, w what other sweets can we make? Well, next up is... Cookies were a pretty safe bet, weren't they? But what if we're feeling a little bit saucier? If you're in the mood for a luscious, beautiful treat, Six Sisters Stuff suggests this scrumptious sounding Snickers brownie trifle recipe. Be warned though, apparently this is so dangerously good it might not even make it to the party. For this recipe, You'll need some brownie mix, a container of Cool Whip, a jar of caramel syrup, a bit of chocolate syrup, and two ounces worth of Snickers. While you may be tempted to go ahead and eat these as is, be patient. It turns out even tasty ingredients like these can be combined. But will I trifle with this trifle? Is it worth the effort? While the danger of this dish is dubious, its deliciousness does entice. And this recipe couldn't be simpler. Just bake a box of brownies according to the instructions, <laughs> then chop them and some Snickers into bite-sized bits and set aside. Fold together some whipped cream and caramel syrup, then layer in a third of the whipped cream, half of the brownies, and a third of the candy bars. Repeat each of these layers until you're fresh out of ingredients, then drizzle some of your syrups on top. Easy. Well, that actually wasn't that much effort at all. Dang, this might be the easiest recipe today. But how does this dessert taste? Uh, hey guys! Another winner on our hands. I love trifle. I usually like make fruit trifles, like, you know, stack berries, like strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, whipped cream. Um, sometimes like you'll throw in a little bit of like a caramel syrup or something or like something if you're doing like a, a sweeter, more like nutty fruit kind of thing with apples. But brownies in trifles kick so much took us. Holy cow. Um, 
you get textural variety, which is fantastic. You get a nice mix of flavors. Caramel and brownies, I mean, obviously worked great together. Caramel brownies have been a classic since time immemorial. Um, and this really does combine all of it. Honestly, if anything, I don't think the Snickers are strictly necessary. You could probably make this with chocolate chips, folding the whipped cream with the caramel and the brownies, and then optionally drizzle the uh, sauce on top, but really, you could even just boil this down to put whipped cream and caramel on a brownie and you'll get a lot of the same flavors. Either way, this is like good. We are two for two on this one. Uh, man, I guess Snickers are good ingredients. Uh, what's up next? You know what? I'm sick of eating. I wanna drink my Snickers. If you're like me, you're not some chump who needs to chew. So enjoy a Blur Original, TM, TM, TM. I'll be making a Snickers latte today. And in the classic style of a cooking YouTuber, I'll be overdoing it and making things from scratch that really didn't need to be made from scratch. To start, we'll be making some caramel sauce. Thankfully, even I can make that. All you need is a can of sweetened condensed milk and a bit of patience. This recipe actually comes from my friend Hannah's Nana, who uh, previously gave me permission to share a couple of her simpler recipes. Thanks, Nana. Just take a can of sweetened condensed milk, remove the label and put it in a crock pot, cover with water and cook on high for four to four and a half hours. Uh, be careful when you remove it. I used a spider here to drop it onto a baking sheet since it's quite hot. And vanilla syrup is extremely simple. You can make some simple vanilla syrup with equal parts water and granulated sugar. Then toss in a couple of teaspoons of vanilla extract once it's off the heat. I'm actually just using pre-made sugar-free syrup from the store to cut down on the sugar further. You know, I'm, uh, I'm diabetic, so I try to avoid it where I can. All right, we have our syrup and sauce. Time to assemble, I guess. This is the part of the video where I assert that the recipe is super cheap and easy and then bust out expensive equipment, right? Well, this recipe is super cheap and easy. So bring out your espresso machine, steam some milk, make a double shot of espresso, and mix in about a tablespoon each of your myriad syrups and a bit of peanut butter powder into the coffee. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed and then pour your steamed milk over top. If you want, you can dust the top with some instant coffee or cocoa powder to get a nice little decoration in. Generally, instant coffee is a bit easier because it'll spread simpler, but you can do really whatever you want. You can even use the peanut butter powder if you want. I think I'm supposed to taste it now though. Uh, this is honestly a bit sweet for me, but I'll still give it a go. Sorry, got really tired there all of a sudden. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, good. So I'm basic. I've ordered like caramel lattes from Starbucks. I know that vanilla and caramel are good in coffee. They're classic coffee flavors. What I've learned here is that you can put peanut butter in coffee and it's really good. Um, I've actually, so I, I record these videos in pieces and I recorded the latte one a bit ago. Since I recorded that, I've actually been putting scoops of peanut butter powder into my coffee occasionally if I need a little bit more sugar, like if my blood sugar's low or whatever and I need a bit. Stick some peanut butter powder in there. It's very tasty, very good. Love that stuff. Um, again, another thumbs up. This is the highest hit rate for a video yet. Um, but we've got another recipe. Let's see if we can break that streak. All right, I'm hungry again. I guess all these snacks and stuff weren't really that filling. Why don't we eat some proper food? And boy, have I got some food for you. You saw the title card, Snickers enchiladas. Now, before you raise your pitchforks and torches, these are mole enchiladas at heart. So I'm sure they'll be good, but I can't resist a nice hook. I'm using a very slightly modified version of this recipe by Lauren Allen. Uh, we'll need a lot of ingredients to start with and I admittedly lost a bit of footage. So, if you wanna follow along at home, you should follow the link in the description to the original recipe. We'll wanna start by preparing the chicken for this first. Here, we're actually going to be boiling our chicken thighs with garlic, onion powder, oregano, some chicken bouillon, and a generous pinch of salt, as well as bay leaves if you have them. Uh, but here come the bulk of the changes, the mole. Since I'm aiming to highlight the peanut and caramelly notes in this mole paplano, I'll need to do a bit of prep work. First off, I'm completely dropping the included sesame and tripling down on raw peanuts. Second, instead of sauteing half a white onion, I'll actually be starting a whole yellow one before everything else, so that by the time we get to the mole, it'll be caramelized. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the modified recipe. All right, hold on, I need, I need my script. For this, you'll need dried arbol, guajillo, and ancho chilies, 
three quarters cups of raw peanuts, a quarter cup of raisins, half a cup of animal crackers, two slices of white bread, a whole yellow onion, four cloves of garlic, five cloves, five peppercorns, a teaspoon of coriander, a teaspoon of cumin, a quarter teaspoon of anise, a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper, a plantain, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of oregano, a cube of chicken bouillon, a corn tortilla, some dark chocolate, and some oil. Whew, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Anyways, before you go further, make sure those onions are jammy and delightful. You do not want sauteed onions. They have to be caramelized for this. If it's taking a long time, you can add a tiny bit of sugar to make them caramelize a bit faster. If they're drying out or burning in the pan, add a bit of water. Um, but generally, caramelization does take a while, so just be patient. Cook on a low heat for a while. Set aside about a third of those onions for later. Bisect and scoop all the chiles and fry them up in a saucepan set to medium heat while another warms two cups of water and the caramelized onions on low heat. After only a few seconds on each side, move those chiles over to the saucepan with the onions. Toast the peanuts and fry the raisins, animal crackers, tortilla, and bread, moving them over just the same after about 40 seconds to a minute. Make sure you're packing this saucepan well. We're gonna be putting a lot in there. Fry up the garlic until fragrant and move it on over, then slice the plantain into approximately half inch segments and give it the same treatment, making sure to fry on both sides. Reduce the heat again and fry up your whole spices and in they go, adding the dry spices after everything else is in. Warm the chocolate with some of the reserved broth from earlier in a separate bowl and start some oil in a large saucepan and just get it warm before removing from heat. Now, I know neither of us are good with our hands, but we have to be careful about this. Add the mixture from saucepan B earlier to a blender, just enough when with just enough added broth so the whole thing gets nice and mixed. Make sure it's as smooth as you can get, then pour through a sieve into a pot with that nice warm oil. Once it's all in, add the chocolate and as much brown sugar as you want, and then comes the fun part. Cook this down over a bit under an hour on medium low heat. Enthralling, I know. And you will have to be active about this. You'll want to keep stirring every couple of minutes to make sure nothing is breaking or burning. Once this mole is ready, serving is easy. Simply serve the chicken, some rice, and some caramelized onions with some warmed corn tortillas, then lay a helping of our mole on top. This mole keeps well, so if you can't eat it all now, don't worry. Also, if you prefer your enchiladas baked, you will be happy to know that this works for that too. Simply assemble your enchiladas in a glass casserole or baking dish and ladle mole on top, then bake for just under half an hour at 350 Fahrenheit or 180C. That was way more work than I usually put into these. Was it worth it though? Honestly, yeah. Um, Super worth it. Mole is good. You know that. Enchiladas are great. Like mole enchiladas, fantastic. But this has all the notes I'd expect from Snickers. This has the caramel from the onions. This has the chocolate from the mole. This has that nutty flavor because we like punched up the peanuts and kept in those almonds. It's, it tastes like Snickers. Like not exactly like Snickers, but you can pick up on all the notes that are in a Snickers. Those nougaty notes, those caramel notes, those peanuts, the chocolate, it's all there. And I call that a win. <laughs> I was not expecting to be, I was not expecting the flavors to be so dead on whenever I made this originally, I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I cook, you know, I cook. I'm not exactly a chef though. So whenever it hit, I was extremely excited. This is good stuff, and I'll be doing recipes like this uh, almost certainly in the future for more of these videos. That being said, that's all I really have for you today. Thank you for joining me in the Snickers kitchen. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.